storytelling time for kids. Every day, there are things we do at the same time. Breakfast is done in the morning, lunch is in the middle of the day, and dinner is in the evening. We may get up in the morning at the same time and go to bed at the same time each night. Time is an important thing. It helps us measure day and night. Time is the way we measure events that have already happened, that are happening right now, or will happen. We call this the past, the present, and the future. Time is measured in minutes and hours. There are 60 seconds in one minute. 60 minutes make one hour. And 24 hours make one day. Half or 12 of those hours make the a.m. or morning, and the other 12 hours make the afternoon and evening or p.m. A clock is used to measure time. There are two kinds of clocks that show the time, analog and digital. Analog clocks have moving hands, a big and a small hand, and digital clocks use numbers only. First, let's talk about analog clocks. You know, the ones with the hands. The numbers 1 through 12 are shown on analog clocks. The numbers represent each hour of the day. There are dashes in between each of those numbers. The dashes represent one minute each. So, how do each of those dashes and numbers tell us the time? That's where the little and big hands come in. The shorter hand is called the little hand. It points to the hour. The longer hand is called the big hand. It points to the minute. Using those hands together gives us the time. Here are some examples. If the little hand is pointing at the three, then we know it's three o'clock. If it is pointing at the four, then we know it's four o'clock. If it's pointing at eight, nine, or ten, you guessed it, we know it's eight o'clock, nine o'clock, or ten o'clock. Can you see the dashes in between all the numbers? Each of those dashes represents one minute. From number to number, five minutes pass. So, 12 to 1 equals five minutes. 1 to 2 means another five minutes have passed, and 3 to 4, and so on. We can count each number by fives. 12 to 1 is 5. 12 to 2 is 10. 12 to 3 is 15. Can you count the entire clock by fives as a little hand rotates? We're going to light each number segment as you count. So here we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. The last number, we don't call 60. We say o'clock instead. Have you ever heard someone say, it's three o'clock or six o'clock? When we say o'clock, we know that the big hand is pointing at the 12. So how does the big hand help us to know what time it is? Well, when it is pointed at the one, we know that it's five minutes. When it's pointed at the two, we know it's 10 minutes. When it's pointed at the three, it's 15 minutes. So, how many minutes is it when it's pointed at the six? Remember, count by fives starting at the 12. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Good job. That's right. The six equals 30 minutes. What about the number nine on the clock? If we know the six equals 30 minutes, then let's keep counting by fives from the six. The seven is 35 minutes and the eight is 40 minutes, which means the nine is 45 minutes. I think you're ready to put the two hands together and tell time. Hey, let's try it out. If the little hand is pointing to the three, what time is it? That's right. It's three o'clock. So now let's add the big hand. If the big hand is pointing to the two, how many minutes is that? Hey, remember to count by fives. Five, ten. Now all we do is put those numbers together. 
three and ten, or it's three ten. If it's the afternoon, then it's three ten p.m. If it's very early in the morning and the sun is still not up, then it's three ten a.m. We use the same twelve numbers for a.m. and p.m. The sun helps us to know whether it's morning or night. Let's try to see if we can figure out some more times on our clock. If the little hand is pointing at the five and the big hand is pointing at the six, what time is it? We know that the first number is five, so now all we need to do is count by fives to find out the rest of the time. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. When we put the five and the thirty together, what time does that become? Did you say five thirty? If you did, you right. Well done. At five thirty p.m., you might be eating dinner. At five thirty a.m., you might be asleep. How about if the little hand is pointing at the ten and the big hand is pointing at the nine? Can you figure that out? Did you get ten forty-five? If you did, you know how to tell time. Let's look closely at this time on the clock. Do you notice that when the time on the analog clock shows ten forty-five, that the little hand is closer to the eleven than the ten? That's because the little hand moves just like the big hand does. It just moves slower. It's closer to the eleven. At ten forty-five, because it's almost eleven o'clock. The same thing happens with the numbers. When the little hand is in between numbers and pointing to a dash, we will need to count the dashes after a number to know exactly what time it is. If the little hand is pointing at the five and the big hand is pointing at two dashes past the two, then we would count by five and then add two to find out that it's five twelve. How about if the little hand is pointing at the four and the big hand is pointing at three dashes past the six? That would mean it would be four thirty plus three, or four thirty-three. Now that you know how to tell time on an analog clock, let's look at a digital clock. These clocks do not have hands. They show the time with the numbers separated by a colon. See this? This here is a colon. The number on the left side of the colon is the hour. The number on the right side of the colon shows the minutes. On this clock, the number three is shown on the left, then the colon, and now the number forty. That means it's three forty. Let's look at another clock. This clock shows the number seven, followed by the colon, then the number fifty-six. That means it's seven fifty-six. How about this clock? On this clock, the time would be one o five. When there is a zero after the colon and before the next number, we say o instead of zero. Remember, when there are two zeros after the first number, we say o clock. But if there is a number after the zero, then we say o, and then the number, or one o five. If the clock reads one and then a zero and a six, then we would say one o six, then one o seven, then one o eight, and one o nine, until it gets to the number ten. Now let's put the analog and digital clocks side by side, and let's see if you can tell what time it is. If you said seven ten, then you're right. Hey, how about this one? Did you say eleven o'clock? Wow! How about this one? Did you say two o eight? Great job! Last one. If you said eight forty three, then pat yourself on the back. You just learned how to tell time. Learning how to tell time is a good thing because we use time to measure all sorts of things. At eight a.m. You may get up in the morning to go to school. At 8 p.m., you may be getting ready for bed. 12 p.m. might be your lunch time. 
while 12 a.m., you're probably fast asleep. Time seems to go quickly when we are doing something we enjoy and slow down when we're doing something we might not like. No matter what you're doing, time keeps moving and never stops. Thanks for following Clarendon Learning. Be sure to subscribe. For more free resources, check us out at clarendonlearning.org.